Hey everybody, Coast to Coast Radio presents the Buffalo Wild Wings Monday Night Football Show. I'm your host, Ron Fitch, and today we're going to talk about New York Giant football, New York Jet football, or I guess they call that football after that disaster yesterday. And we're going to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles' big win over the Steelers, and we're going to go around the league with uh, Robert Page, and we're also going to have Jake the Voice talk about the Philadelphia Eagles when we come back. We're back here at the Monday Night Football Show, Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm here with Robert Page. And we're going to, unfortunately, we're going to talk about the local, two local teams that didn't fare as well. First, I want to talk about the giants Redskins game. And, Robert, I'm not really prepared to talk about the Giants losing to the Redskins because I knew I was 110% sure they were going to beat the Redskins. I'm in complete shock. What's your opinion about the game? Well, my opinion about that, um, the Giants and Eli Manning, uh, under pressure, they, they tend to make big mistakes. Oh, and, yeah. and, and it showed again, like we talked about last week, uh, interception Eli Manning. That's what he does. He throws interceptions. He doesn't always do that. He's one of the best yeah, at yeah. two-minute drills in the NFL. Yeah, well, but well, he has thrown a couple picks. Under, that under was bad of, yesterday. Under a lot of pressure, he, he folds to it. And, and, and we see that, especially when they play the Eagles. Well, okay, okay. we're going to get to that in a minute. But they had a 21-9 to lead, and they didn't put the game away. And they allowed the Redskins to come back, get a score before the half, and that gave them life. And then they had another opportunity when Odell Beckham caught a pass, and they had a chance to, to score a touchdown, 26-24, to get a bigger lead instead of Eli throwing a pick. Then they come down and get a field goal to take the lead. Yes. But they were kicking field goals all day long, mm -hmm. and the Skins finally drove down the field to get the game-winning field goal, and, it, and he ran on the Giants. And the Giants' defense is much improved, but there was a couple of breakdowns. It was just – all three phases they kind of broke down because the special teams they allowed the long yes, special team return yes. then on defense they allowed uh cousins to, to come down the field which is ridiculous and then eli threw two bad picks one in the red zone and then the other to end the game i didn't know who he was throwing to and i love eli eli is one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time he wow. just had a bad one of my favorite. Wow. I'm saying he's the best, that's, but I do love that's him. Say, that's saying a lot. Eli Manning, one of your favorite quarterbacks? Well, I mean, he got two Super Bowl MVPs, so there's no well, wrong with nah, that. I, I think his, his players got the MVPs. Well, his him. players he, didn't make he, that throw to Manningham he, 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 at the end of that second was, game. Against it, was the great catch. it was a great catch. It was a great throw. It was one of the best throws of all time yeah, okay. he threw. Like, okay. The second time against the Patriots, he was, he was good. The first time, I mean, you could have gave it to the defense, but he was still the leader of that team that beat the undefeated Patriots. So, please. I think the Giants will be just fine. They're still a work in progress, though. They they come up I with think, the goofiest uh, ways to lose. The Giants I think they're going to clean that up. Are just fine. Okay. Well, the way I see this division right now, the NFC East, um, I'm looking at the Eagles winning the division, not just because they're my team, but because the Eagles are playing great football right now. I, I understand um, they are playing the great. The Redskins are going to rebound. The Redskins came to. They have life the, now. Yes. The they, Giants loot, yes. giving that game away gave the Redskins yes. life. Yes. I, I, I like what the Cowboys are doing with Dak Prescott. Um, my only question is, Dak Prescott, Carson Wentz, the longer the season goes, the more tape, the, the more game film other coaches yes. get. He, How, you're going to have to come up with a plan B once they know you and know your tendencies. Well, I think the answer to that for the Eagles is that the Eagles are so deep in talent, I think it would be hard to do that for this year. Well, you know what? We'll agree. We're going to get to the NFL segment later. I'm going to get to the Jets. Ryan Fitzpatrick put on a show yesterday. Yes, he did. He threw six interceptions. There was at least four of the times where they were dropped interceptions. Yes. And then he kept throwing toward the – the Kansas City Chiefs, I never say this. It looked like – I know Rich is going to laugh at this. Did you ever mention – it looked like Ryan Fitzpatrick was on the take. <laughs> it looked like the ownership of the Chiefs slid him an extra $50. An extra few dollars. To, because that was ridiculous. It was really ridiculous. Um, I've never seen that before in the league for yeah. somebody to, to, to throw that many interceptions. And then not only that, for the coach to leave him in the game. So leave him in the game. I want to see Bryce Petty now. You know. But he – but Fitzpatrick was great against Buffalo, and he was allowed against Kansas City. That's kind of his M.O. And what's funny is 
He reminds me of a player back in our day, who we were a little older, a guy by the name of Dave Craig. He could be great, oh, man. and he could be terrible when That's he was on sad. the Seahawks. That's sad. I wouldn't even say his name. Wow. Oh, they, they play just alike. <laughs> same height, same style, yeah. um, and, and they're both alike. The only thing that worries me about the Jets is Revis is getting burnt every week, and yes. I love – this is a guy I love. He could be a Hall of Famer, but he's going to have to make some adjustments. He's not going to be able to just – play that tight man to man anymore because Kansas City ran crossing routes all yes, cross game him up. Yes, long yes. and there was no adjustments. Nope, none. Um, you know, uh, what I'm seeing, especially from Kansas City, I mean, Andy Reid. Mm, Andy Reid. Andy Reid. And, and he does well in the beginning of the season, in the middle of the season, but when it comes down to it, they always get caught up to it. That's the team that you look at on tape all year long, and then you catch up to them. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's why I'm saying I see the difference in them and the Eagles or, or even Washington. Now, Washington has learned how to continue to play well as the season goes on because they have so much talent. But, yeah, they're going to they're gonna, – I think Washington will be fine towards the end of the year uh, because they have talent. I worry about Cousins, who is a average to ordinary quarterback. But as far as the Jets – they have a lot of tough games coming up. They have the uh, AFC North. They have a lot of tough games. Then they got to play for whatever reason. They always beat the Patriots once, even with Brady. Yes, they do. So yes. they always yes. do that. Well, I don't uh, think that's going to happen this but year. But then they got to play Buffalo again, and Buffalo gave them trouble. Maybe mm -hmm. Rex gets them at the wrong time. So the Jets, they're looking at a wild card. They're looking at an opportunity to play for a wild card, but they have to get better play from Fitzpatrick because everybody else played well. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marshall's playing on one leg like a real trooper. Uh, Forte's been a godsend for them. Yes, he has. Yes. And the defense did well. I mean, they kept him in the game, but he kept mm -hmm. throwing picks. He threw three red zone yes, picks red zone, and yes. one pick six, and Kansas City scored off a fumble return right. on a touchdown. Right. So they didn't Kansas, do that much. Kansas City's offense, nah, they didn't do anything. But if it wasn't for those pick sixes, the pick six and the red zone interceptions, um, they would have been in trouble. Now, now, it's funny. As an Eagle fan, did you know that I, we can look on NFL reference, the Eagles have never lost to the Jets and, in their franchise history. And we never will. Oh, my gosh. We never will. <laughs> Listen, on that note, we're going to be back with Jake the Voice, and we're going to talk a little more about Philly football. We're back here at the Buffalo Wild Wings Monday Night Football Show. And I also want to mention how good the food is. They have specials on Monday, today. All you can eat wings and fries for only $16.99. So if you're a big eater and you just want to eat all night, I don't suggest you eat all night, but the wings are really good. The fries are good. And the hamburgers are underrated. <laughs> Tuesday's my day because it's half price traditional wings. I love traditional wings. And the general manager, Rich, always takes care of me. He spoils me, but that's another story. Wednesday is kids eat free all day. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. Uh, pint night, all pints are only $2 from 7 to closing. Thursday, I do like the 65 cent boneless wings. I think I ordered about 30 of them, and they didn't cost me that much, so I do like that. Uh, Monday through Friday from 3 to 6, and from 10 to closing is happy hour. I think this is an Eagle fan here. This, this fly here. <laughs> Football specials from Monday to Friday, $3.75, tall course lights. Saturday and Sunday, and Sundays is usually packed here with a lot of Cowboy fans, unfortunately. Uh, $3.75, tall Miller lights, and $3 shots of Jack Daniels and Jack Honey all day long and every day. I think... Robert Page had a little bit of Jack Daniels where he's talking about the Eagles winning the division. But that's another story. I'm here with uh, Jake the Voice. And Jake, because you're a Philadelphia resident, how is the fan base right now? They're 3-0. and How excited is that fan base down there? Oh, they're, I mean, this is probably, I mean, I haven't really had a chance to talk to a lot of, of my friends or even really a lot of Eagles fans, but you got to think that just, 3-0 and for, I think, the first time. You know, I don't even really remember what year it's mm -hmm. been since they went to 3-0. I'm going to think, like, you know, back to, to 04, back when they had Terrell Owens. And, 
you know, we ended up going to the Super Bowl and losing to the Patriots. But, I mean, the buzz certainly around town, I think, as Rob was mentioning, is everybody's been mentioning Wensylvania. Everybody has been wensed. You know, we are now in Wensylvania. Yes, we are. And he was great yesterday, but it was more than just stats because he was uh, 22 for 31 for 300 y- 301 yards. He was yards. actually 23, I think. He 23, had, yes, he did. Still, he, he, he was, prob- he's probably, you know, I've watched a lot of great quarterbacks. I actually had a chance to see a few of his games when he was at North Dakota State. I thought that, you know, when we spoke last week, I, I had thought that, you know, he has to have a really good test. He struggled in the first half of the game against Chicago. Mm-hmm. And this week, you know, I didn't get a chance to see much of the he game. Was, he was on fire. and they, He had some of the best passes I think yes. I've ever seen out of a rookie. Yes, and another thing he does well, he plays well when he's out of the pocket too. So he could throw on the run. He's even more dangerous on the run because he doesn't run, but he can see the field. His IQ is off the charts. He's still young. But the Philadelphia defense is good because Fletcher Cox had two sacks. I, they I have, they have harassed the Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Chicago Bears quarterbacks all game long. That's a good quality to have because you're going to need that going up against Eli Manning and either Tony Romo or Dak Prescott when you're playing in your schedule, when you start to play the NFC East yeah. teams. Well, the thing, that, the thing I like the most about uh, – uh, this defense, as you mentioned, is this front line. I mean, Benny Logan and Fletcher Cox are probably two of the biggest defensive ends. We have a very good linebacking core. Connor Barwin actually making a transition from, from linebacker now to defensive end really helps our, our front line. Adds more pressure. It puts more it, pressure. It does. It, it, it really does. And I'm, I'm just thrilled to see how well this defense is playing. I still think there's a little bit of a concern with the secondary. And without Leotis McKelvin, I still believe if, if, that, if the opposing quarterback just hits whoever the quarterback is, can just hit the strides, because there is still some problems for the secondary. We've got a lot of work to do. We also um, are missing our tight end, Zach Ertz. Last okay. week was not as big a concern as I had thought. Though we but had he, probably but more he had a, he had a big, yeah, but he Chicago. had a big catch against Pittsburgh. Uh, he one of the longest. Well, Zach didn't play last uh, well, yesterday. The, the tight end. Oh yeah. Yes, he did. Trey he Burton. Tw- nope, that's Trey Burton actually. Had a that's great Trey Burton. Twenty-four yard pass. Um, he, Wentz didn't go deep per se because the seventy-three yard pass to Darian Sproles, Sproles was a sh- was a was a screen pass. But Sproles oh, he's a pinball machine. Is so underrated. Yep. He's the best friend to a rookie quarterback. Well, he's. I mean. I think Darian has has shown that not only is he a great slot type guy, he's probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, special teams returners in all of football. And that was the thing that that uh, it, that Howie did when he signed him a few years ago from from New Orleans. I mean, he really brings a lot of speed and determination to this to Philadelphia, and and he's a very good fan favorite to a lot of Eagles fans. But he's still extremely fast, and if you look at his body of work at San Diego, and at New Orleans, and now he could make a case that when he's done, he could be a Hall of Famer. Um, just before his. Overall body of work as a running back, as a receiver, uh, because of it's hard to it's hard to say. I'm gonna look at his stats, but sometimes you gotta go eye test. And when I sometimes I'll look at eye test, I'm like Hall of Famer, not Hall of Famer, a borderline Hall of Famer, almost there, not quite Hall of Famer type players. A lot of those, he's on that list. But if he keeps going the way he's going, he could sneak in and surprise people. If he keeps yep. playing the next two or three years for Philadelphia at this high level. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, like I said, I'm really excited to see what he can do, and I'm excited to see what this team can do. We have a bye week this week, and it's it's going to be nice for a lot of our players to rest. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we'll get uh, Zach and, and Leotis back for offense and defense. We've got, we're going to Detroit. We have a really good bulk of our schedule coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, we won't have to play against Adrian Peterson when we play Minnesota. But, but Minnesota's tough. Minnesota is Minnesota. tough. And, because and, and Zimmer, Zimmer, Sam a lot of, Zim, Zim confused the quarterbacks. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and they made a good choice with a guy like uh, Sam. And mm-hmm. Sam is going to, you know, he's going to get a great ovation when he comes home. He was actually, he never wanted to leave. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it, it was, 
especially the Eagles fans, it was a kind of a shock when he got traded. Well, you but Minnesota had, did need a quarterback. Yes, yes, yes. And Listen, he was I think he was the perfect guy to go to. He it's was a perfect, perfect offense for him. It was perfect for him. But you know, you have wins, you have a future. Now you have an opportunity to now build for a championship because you have a quarterback that can win you a Super Bowl. Well, that if our city receivers is, right, if our yeah. receivers can make catches. Now after we had our segment last week. I saw more drop balls by this receiving team than I that I saw probably in an entire season. And, and Matthews is Jerry Rice's uh, nephew, so you'd think he'd be able to catch the ball. And he did. Yesterday, Yesterday. he probably had – he really turned it around uh -huh. in such a short time. Uh, Nelson Aguilar is now starting to come on. And like I said, um, Trey Burton has filled in very well for Zach Ertz. So, so Brent Selleck has now moved back into the starting tight end position. Trey Burton has really come on, and I think he's probably one of the most underrated tight ends in all of football. Definitely underrated. Especially as a backup. Yeah. Our offensive line has come on in a big way. Uh, I, like I said. I How's mean, Peters playing? Because I know he's a little older, but he was one of the best left tackles I think he's in the, a long time. I think he, he's the best. He was the best. And you know why he's the best? He's one of the most athletic left tackles around even when he was on buffalo and buffalo stupidly traded him to the eagles he was a very athletic you cannot get around him because his feet he has very quick feet he also has a very high iq yes he's he does probably one of the smartest linemen in football and i think it's it was a blessing for us to bring him in from buffalo and lane johnson has also been a big addition we're very fortunate that he hasn't uh, been suspended with the, um, I think it was PEDs, if I remember off the top okay. of my head. I think he was being accused of that. He appealed his suspension, but they haven't officially uh, had a ruling. I think he's supposed to have one, I think, in about a week or two from now. Okay. I'm, I'm not 100% on that. But like I said, watching a guy like Carson Wentz, I was able to get home last night, watch the highlights. I just can't even begin to tell you oh, how you, impressed you have, I am you have by the way Carson has, has, has anchored this offense. I mean, just the way he's able to scramble, the way he's able to get out of the pocket. I mean, somebody's calling him a younger Ben Roethlisberger, yeah. and he outplayed a guy who, let's be honest, is one of the premier quarterbacks in all football. Hey, it happens. It happens. Listen, I'd like to thank you very much. You hit a home run as usual. Oh, I appreciate it, Ron. Thank we you for having me, voice. as always. When we're back, we're going to have Robert Page on. We're going to go around the NFL, and we're going to talk once again about the Eagles and how good really are the Eagles. We're going to find out next. We're back here at Buffalo Wild Wings in Linden, New Jersey, and I see the spread out here, which is, looks really good. It makes me really hungry, but we do have to, I do have to do a segment with Robert Page. I want to talk about all the big games. First, I want to talk about how great your Eagles did look against my Steelers. I, I predicted the Eagles to win, not like that. I really love how your defense looked. That was, that was very impressive. Fletcher Cox is better than ever right now. Yes, uh, our defense looks real good. Um, it looks like back in the Buddy Ryan days uh, to start out right now, and um, I expect it to even get better. It can. This is the only my only worry about the Eagles. I don't want to make sure it's not the same old Eagles. That game, you have this emotional game against your rival. You have to come back the following week, not this week, but the following week against Detroit, who's going to be desperate, and go to Detroit and play well and get that win. Uh, if you do that, that's really uh, going to impress man, that, me. That's going to be the same. You're going to see the same thing you seen yesterday. Well, if that's the case, then I, I, I change my – I'm just – that's the only worry. That's a young team, and they get really emotional, and then they then there's that letdown. If you don't have a letdown and you play like that, that's different because you have a rough schedule coming up. After that, it's at Washington. Yes. What do you think? No problem. Washington's a lot better. That, that's going to be kind of tricky. No problem. No problem. You're going to get after uh, – Cousins. Uh, yes, we'll be all over him. And, and then you have to play Minnesota at home. And we're going to talk about Minnesota in a minute. Actually, I'm going to talk about Minnesota now. They completely confused uh, Cam Newton to the point. Yes. They confused Aaron Rodgers, which is hard to do. And they did it twice. They did it last year in the division clinching win in Green Bay. They did it again this year at home. They went to Carolina and confused Cam Newton to the point. They had 10 points. It could be from 
four o'clock yesterday to now, I don't even think they would have scored any more points. That's how confused Cam Newton was with three interceptions in that game. Well, I tell you, I, don't, I really, you know, I was impressed with Minnesota. And, um, their offense is good. Their defense did confuse them a lot. But, their defense is serious. But, but, still, but still, I will say this again, like I said earlier in the show, the Eagles' offense has so many weapons. That offensive line is so good. And well, then we'll get Selleck back also. I know, we'll I understand. We'll have our double tight end offense in there again. I think we're going to be really hard to well, I from, from now, from what I see, the best team in the NFC, I believe, is Minnesota. And if I, I could put you guys too, I just think because – they have experience from last year, and they have a, a more, a little more experience, and it, and their resume is better because you did beat Pittsburgh, but they, they beat have. Green Bay, and they went to Carolina and won, they have and one, you beat they the have Bears. One they have one problem. Now they're going to play the Eagles, so they, you're they, going, that's going to that's going to be the proven point. They have one problem. What's the problem? They have Sam Bradford as their quarterback. I understand what we you're saying. We will chase him. Okay. Beat him up. He doesn't want to take a hit. He doesn't, but you. Yeah. I, I understand that point, but you also got to worry about Wentz because Zimmer's a genius when it comes to confusing quarterbacks, and Wentz is smart, smarter okay. than most rookie quarterbacks. But you also have to worry about. You got to uh, run the ball. You got. That's what I was about you to say. You got to run the ball. We have a pound the ground offense. Right You're going to have to do which that. I'm very impressed with. We can run the football, and then once we create that run, we we throw those little ten outs, you know, across the middles. We look real good. Our receivers are getting wide open. We have a host of young receivers. Mm -hmm. Our team is very young, and I see them growing as the season definitely. goes on. They're definitely so it's going point. to get it's going to get really interesting. Really you know, with interesting. the NFC East. Then, um, then after that, you play at the New York Giants, which I guarantee the Giant win because I said I would well, read a prepared statement well, if the Giants would lose. That's going to be believe. real. That's going to be real interesting because I'm going to be sitting right here, at London Buffalo Wild. Wings. I will be here too, and, and I will be and, telling you that the Giants you, will beat them. I will, We're not, we, I will sit right next to you. I, yes, I, I'm pretty, yes, yes, you I believe to. the Giants will be much better. This is they're a little bit of a mess, but I just there's too much talent. I think they're going to get better. My only worry is Odell Beckham. He has to calm down. Every time he plays Josh Norman, he gets crazy. Last year, if you remember, when he launched his head, his helmet toward Josh Norman, that could have went completely wrong. He could have yes. broke his neck. Yes, he could have. Yes. And then yesterday he kicks the field goal stand that they practice on, on the sidelines, and it hits his head. He could have got a concussion. Uh, he has to calm down. That's the only thing I worry about, that the Eagles know that. Yes, when they, they look get, at the tape, they will get they in say, his head. Okay. We'll, See, we will get in his head. That's what I worry about. Yes, we'll get in his I head. I worry about sitting next to you watching the game, and Odell Beckham has one of his tantrums, and you're laughing at me. That's what I'm telling I don't want that. No, I'm not so I need pick the Giants. You. You're my buddy. I'm not going to pick on you. I need the I Giants. I, I love you. I love you. I'm not going to pick on you. And then after that, it's at Dallas. So you have a yes. rough schedule. Oh, we are, we're going to love that. I think that's our game, the number eight. Or it's our eighth game. Or Yeah. No. Yeah, that's a tough game because well, you Dak know is playing well. I literally can see he was going 8 0. I don't see that. I see, I can them, see them going 8 0. I see them losing two of those games. I see them going 6 and 2. Well, we can get a little wager on that. We need some wings I, I, on that. We get a win. They could go 7 and 1. They're losing to the Giants. No. If you want to say you want to go seven and one or six and two, I think the rescue game is tricky because it's not a rival game. You that's a game you could sleep on because you're going to be favored over in that game. But you might win that, but you're not beating the Giants. Yes, in, we're, in way, we're going that, eighty zero. Oh. That's not happening. The second half of our season is going to be real interesting. Yeah, I think we, it's we, easier the second half of well, your season. Well, we usually have a tendency to lose the games that we shouldn't win. Well, that Detroit. We do we do do that? Well, nah, nah. We own Detroit. I understand. We own them. I understand. We own them. I'm going to go NFC. They're, to me, I don't see any contenders. I just see playoff teams. Carolina, they got their issues. They play, they play around too much. I understand you want to celebrate ends on everything. It's too – they got to get a little more serious with this yes. year because you got beat up in, a, in their Super Bowl. You need to be real serious. Arizona, I don't understand them yet. They lost to New England without Brady. They got blown out by Buffalo, and Buffalo was a mess at the time. I got Minnesota as the best. I got Philly up there. I got the Giants. I got Dallas. Dallas is a, is a good team. 
they beat the Bears. The Bears is pretty much a high school uh, team. Let me say one thing. Is that your order of what you expect out of the uh, NFC? In Seattle. Carolina first? I mean, no, what, no. I have order? everybody everybody oh, all oh, lumped together like tennis. jambalaya. Okay. Nah, no, everything well, all together like we, a Philly cheese we, steak. We, we can separate that right, right well, away. I, I'm, I'm, After week I'm six or seven, you will see the cream rise to the top. And that's – I like an eight-week sample size. And then as you're playing toward November, December – that's when championship teams make their run and playoff teams make their run. So I want to see a body of work first. And then I'll, I'll you know, I'll give you, because every team started out good early. As far as the AFC, to me, there's only two top teams. That's Denver oh, man. and that's New England, because New England's disciplined. Whoa. That's why they win without, they could, Belichick could call me right now and say, Ron Fitch, I know you can only throw the ball 10 yards, but I need you. I'll just run plays, 10-yard plays, and we'll run. And, and you'll we'll beat win. The, and you'll and win. win. And you'll That's win. how they are. They're my number one team in the NFC. No, NFC I, I have Denver as the number one no, team. No. I'm going to tell you Denver, why. Denver, Denver, number one, they have their number. Denver's 5-1 and one against New England, 2-1 and one against Belichick all time. And they have the defense that travels. And, and if they get them back in Denver, Brady or no Brady, they're going to get them again because that's the one issue with Brady is if you can put pressure on them. And where – and Miller well, come off that line like nobody's business, and Wolf is good. And I'm going to tell you something. Trevor Simeon is like Wentz. Well, He's a you, smart quarterback, and they're running. They're actually better offensively this did year. Did you forget something? What did I forget? You forgot that Brady is suspended for the first I under, four games. I'm talking about when Brady when, comes and back. And when he comes back. He's going to be setting a statement. He's going to be setting a statement, yes. but he was 0-2 in Denver last year. That will not happen this year. Well, that, He's – He's, he's, you know what he, he is against back, Denver? He's 1-5 he against Denver. When he comes back, let me tell you something. He's really It wouldn't be. surprise me that day. I just think as far as those teams are concerned, there better not be no slip-up because whoever gets the home field advantage, I'm going to pick. If that's right. back in Denver, they're not right. walking into Denver winning. Well, I don't think it would be back in Denver. I don't. Uh, Denver's I don't, pretty I don't, good. I don't think so. And then you, have other, then you have playoff teams that are good but have deficiencies. Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Kansas City. The Jets are a playoff team, even though they're a mess. Oakland is yes, getting Oakland better. Is getting Oakland's better. on yes, the rise. Oakland is getting and, and, better. And Kansas City's always – they're always good enough to get to the playoffs. They're not talented enough to make a run. But you know with Andy Reid, they're going to get to the playoffs. So what about Baltimore? What do you Baltimore, is a, Baltimore is undefeated. Yes. And they're very good. I just need to see them tested. they got to play the Eagles. they got to play the Cowboys. they got to play the rest of their division. Um – then they got to play the Giants. They have to. They have a. They have to play the Patriots. They got to yes. play the Jets at the Jet. They play Jets play a lot better at home. So I want to see them tested. Now I love Ozzie Smith as a general manager. Yes, I he's do a, too. He's yes. a great general yes. manager. Um, and then you know with Pittsburgh, this is my issue with this, my Steelers. They're very great. They're very, you'll see them play great at home. They're at times on the road can be pushed around. They play good at Cincinnati. They play good on certain road teams. Mm. But when a road team pushes back, they can be very soft. Right. Over the last eight years, I've watched this pattern. Whenever a team, whenever there's blowback and a team engages them in a dogfight on the road, mm. they have a tendency, especially the offensive line and the secondary, to get pushed around and they could be a little on the soft side. So I'm kind of calling them out because I've watched that. And, and unfortunately, that's with Tomlin. With Cower, they never won home games, and they always play great on the road. But with Tomlin, they could be a little on the soft side, and I'm going to use a Malcolm X line. The chickens came to roost yesterday, and I'm, that was good. <laughs> that's good. Sometimes that's, that's good to get, to get beat like that to wake you up, to let you know you're not New England or Denver yet, and if you ever want to be, you, you better improve. Because it's a long year. I said that Minnesota's one of the best, but the Philly could get up there. And the Giants kick it up there and make a move. We don't know yet, but from what I see, the eye test, Denver, New England, Minnesota, and Philadelphia have shown so yes, far that yes, they, have. They, yes. have, they have. Yes. They have and the, New England has showed it without their starting but quarterback. But I'm going to keep the Arizona in and Carolina because they're the defending champs. I just want to see, see what happens down the line. But, you know, Carson Palmer got that little interception bug, man. I – Last yeah, year was bad, and I don't know if there's still lingering yeah, issues. Yeah, he has a problem. I don't know what the issue is, but um, if they want to go any further, 
than what they did last year, which they lost in the yeah. NFC Championship game. They're going to have to straighten that out. Early. Well, let's put it this way. Say, for instance, you make the playoffs. You don't, if you're Arizona, you don't want to come cross country and play the Eagles in no. the playoff game. Oh, and no. Cold. no. You no. want the Eagles to come. To come Remember out that there. year yes. that yes. Uh, they beat me? Yes. You want the Eagles to come out right. the field. You do not want Carson Palmer right. out there with Connor Barwin and all the no. guys rushing no. him. And he's throwing the ball yeah. to green jerseys. Yes, yeah, that's what it would happen to. But it's going to be a lot of fun, and it was good to, to talk with you. Mm-hmm. And it's been a lot of fun. We're going to end this show. I want to dedicate the entire show to your mom uh, who you. passed. Uh, she was a great you. woman. She's in a better place right now. And she raised a beautiful son who helped put this show together. So that's how I want Thank to end you. the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.